Hi, it's John here. Just a quick note that I'm using Gamebench to do the FPS monitoring on this video. So Gamebench is basically a performance monitoring tool that uh, developers and enthusiasts alike can use to check the stability of their games and apps and you know improve performance where required. So I've put a link down below. It's definitely worth giving it a try uh, if you want to start making your own FPS videos. So Gamebench is very simple. I'll just quickly show you it before we get started here. So basically you connect your phone up with USB debugging enabled. You can select it from the drop down list. You select what game you'd like to monitor, hit the record button and it will start the test. So you can see here the frames per second, the live sort of current frames per second, CPU usage, memory usage, and you get your averages on the side here. So yeah, definitely check it out. It's worth having a look if you want to start creating your own videos maybe. I would uh, recommend it. It's definitely the nicest performance monitoring tool I've used. So once you finish your monitoring, you can actually go into the dashboard on their site and have a look through all the stats. So you can check through the different summary details here, or you can go into the metrics section and get a slightly more detailed view of things. I will do a full video on it if, if there's any interest, but uh, for now, let's get on with the video and see how these two perform. Hi, it's John from Android Addicts, and today we're doing a frame rate benchmark between the Exynos 2100 and the Snapdragon 888. So the game we're looking at today is Genshin Impact. You can see here we're starting in the lowest graphics quality, 60 FPS, and we're just going to move up steadily between the various different graphical qualities, going next to medium and then to highest. And you'll see for this test I tried to follow the same path each time. There will be some very slight differences between them, but it's near enough the same path. So you'll also notice that you can see the average FPS and the CPU load for each processor. We've also got a little temperature icon there next to the Genshin app icon. So the reason that the Exynos is starting at 41 is because I was doing a bit of testing and recording beforehand, so it's already warmed up and ready to go. You will notice however the Snapdragon does catch up quickly. Now, any stutters you may see whilst I'm rotating the camera, uh, just because I'm using a gamepad to play this game, I just thought it would be better than having my fingers on the screen. And rotating the camera, for whatever reason, doesn't work very smoothly. We can see a few frames drop there for the Exynos on the way down this hill. Overall, though, they're both averaging a good 59, 60 FPS at the moment. You will notice that on the lowest quality settings here, you can see various game assets sort of popping in and loading up at the very last minute. There are also some times where the music overlaps here. It does sound a bit odd, but overall it's not too bad. I thought it was better just to keep the sound on both. You can see there, for example, the shadows loading up on the trunk for the Snapdragon. It's interesting to see the CPU load as well. The Exos is slightly less utilised than the than the Snapdragon. So 
So here's an example where the music is getting slightly mixed up. But like I said, overall it's not too bad. The Snapdragon's doing really well. It does start to stutter slightly when you go into the city. So we can see there the final results are a medium of 60 FPS for both processors. But you can see there was certainly a lot less dips on the Snapdragon compared to the Exynos. Now the CPU usage is quite interesting. It seems that the Snapdragon is actually being utilized a bit more than the Exynos. As you can see around the sort of three to four minute mark, the Snapdragon is around just under 50%, whereas the Exynos seems to be, I don't know, around 30. 40%. Okay, so now we are moving on to meeting graphics at 60 FPS. Uh. I'm not quite sure why, but when I was playing this, it felt like this actually ran better than on the lowest settings. Certainly on the Exynos, it uh, seemed to hold at 60 a lot easier. So again, just ignore any camera stutters here. It is just because I was using a gamepad. You can see CPU load wise, the Snapdragon is about 2% higher currently than the Exynos. And this is running with power saving mode turned off. I do understand that power saving mode turned on does make some differences, but uh, for this test, it is off. I tried to keep it as uh, accurate as to what a normal person would have their phone set up as out of the box. So don't forget that the Exynos has the Mali G78 MP14 and the Snapdragon has the Adreno 660.
So the Axonos is struggling a bit here, dropping below 50 frames per second. Whereas the Snapdragon is just ploughing straight through. Again, the Exynos certainly averaging around 50, 45 to 50 in this section. The Snapdragon isn't really uh, breaking a sweat yet. You can see temperature wise they are very similar, 40 and 41. And again, the Snapdragon only really struggles a tiny bit as you load into the city here. Okay, so let's have a look at the FPS graph. So very solid performance there from the Snapdragon. You can see the Exynos starts quite well, but it does then start dipping quite uh, badly at the end. So again, on the CPU usage, we can see between the two and three and a half minute mark, for example, the Exynos is quite sort of sporadic with its CPU usage compared to the Snapdragon, which is a very sort of consistent, just below 50%. Okay, so next up we are moving on to the highest settings. Again, 60 FPS here. Temperatures are 41 and 40. We can see straight away here actually that the Snapdragon average CPU has started quite high. 28% compared to the Exynos is 20%. But we're certainly holding on to that 60 FPS pretty well still. Whereas the Exynos, as you can see, it's dipping below 40 at points here. I did actually fall off this cliff a couple of times on the Exynos version and as I hadn't unlocked the sort of flight ability I did fall to my death so I did have to uh, start it over a couple of times. Anyway we can see there again we are dropping below 40 on the Exynos so it is really struggling on the higher settings. But as you can see the actual CPU load itself isn't very high. So this could be down to throttling it all really depends on what Samsung have set for each chipset. So the Snapdragon is staying around the 50 mark. Bit of a glitch there for the Snapdragon, down to 30. I think that's just when it loads in new assets, it uh, does blip every now and again. If we have a look at the average CPU load, we can see we're about 19% on the Exynos and 26 on the Snapdragon.
very slight difference in time of day on the Snapdragon, but it doesn't seem to phase it too much. So we drop down to 39 FPS on this Snapdragon whilst walking up the stairs. So let's see how the Exynos does. Seems to handle it better. But overall, as you can see from the median <laughs> FPS there, 49 for the Exynos and 51 for the Snapdragon. So we've got a finishing temperature as well at 42 on the Exynos and 41 on the Snapdragon. So looking at the frame rate chart here, we can see the Exynos had a bit of a burst at the start, but then it did drop down to around the sort of 40 to 50 FPS throughout the remainder of the test. Whereas the Snapdragon, as you can see, kept at 60 a lot longer see about what a minute and a half there and then it did settle down to around about 50 for the rest of the test. So looking at the CPU usage charts here we can see the Exynos had quite a few spikes early on and then it did just kind of hover around the 20% mark. Whereas I said during the test the Snapdragon does seem to work harder and as you can see for longer you can see it just after four minutes there it did rank up to over 50% at times. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button and leave any comments you have down below as to what your thoughts are on this test. I've got some other games in the pipeline to do a similar test with. So if there's any game in particular you think I should try out, let me know. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and then you'll know when I've uploaded a new video. And if you want to become a member of the channel, click on the join button and that really helps out. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.